family. Welcome to our Marketplace Daily Devotion. This is Lydia here, and as you can see, amen, I am in the car again. We are making our way back home on this beautiful Saturday morning. It is so beautiful. Uh, we're just actually across the state line coming back into Florida. It was really kind of chilly in Georgia this morning, so I am glad to be getting back to some sunny weather here. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and Amen. Just uh, you know, stop what we're doing and just take a moment to just Musa, hallelujah, and to get a nugget from the Lord today in our Marketplace Daily Devotion. And if some of you are working, if you want to review this on your 15-minute break or your lunch break, so be it. But if some of you are home, amen, this could be your word for the evening before you go to bed tonight. Or, you know, if you have a moment now, I just want to thank you so much for taking out the time to just uh, listen to see what God has to say for today. So our daily devotion today on this beautiful February the 4th, uh, the topic is God's requirements of you. God's requirements of you. Yes, there is something that God is requiring actually from all of us, you know, that we have to do if we want to see the good land that God has prepared for us. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if we want to see that place, if we want to partake in those kingdom blessings, then there are some requirements that we have to do. And so here in Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter and the 12th verse, let me just read the scripture to you. Amen. Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter and the 12th verse. And I'm also going to read the 13th verse, but it says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God requires of thee? So it starts out asking a question. What does the Lord God requires of thee? And I want to ask you that question today. What is it that God is requiring of you? And then it turns around and then it gives them those answers. Amen. Don't you just love that? <laughs> and we could all take tests like that, you know, where you know they ask us the question and they turn around and give us the answers. It'd be a, it would be a lot better for us, wouldn't it? So he turns around and he gives the answer. He says, this is what you need to do. You need to fear the Lord thy God. You need to walk in his, all his ways. You need to walk in all his ways. That's number two. And you need to love him and serve him. So that's, you know, three, but, you, you know, in order to serve, you really have to love because when you serve something or you serve someone, then you're, you're doing things that is of use to them. And if you don't love a person, you're not going to care, you know, what benefits them or what's of use to them. So those things kind of go hand in hand. You know, you have to love him and serve him. It says, serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. You know, your soul is where your will, your emotions, you know, <laughs> I'm telling you, if you love somebody and you love them with all your heart and all your soul, then you're going to want to do the things that please them. And this is what God is saying that is a requirement for the children of Israel. And you know what? It is also a requirement for you today. And then he says in the 13th that, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you. So this is not a request. It is a command. Okay, it is a command. God says, I'm commanding you to do this. For it will be good for you, <laughs> you know, to do it. <clears throat> you know, it kind of reminds me of... Um, when we have children and we will uh, we will tell them to do something and when we really want them to do it we'll say I strongly suggest I strongly suggest that you do what I'm telling you to do because when you put it like that they automatically know it's going to be some consequences if they don't do what you've asked them to do uh -huh. Those of you who have children, oh, it's going to be some consequences, honey, if you don't do it. And so this is kind of like what God is saying. He's telling the children of Israel, it's going to be for your good if you do. Which means if you don't, the things ain't going to look too good. So let's get into our definition of the word I'm using. The word that I'm using today is require. The definition of require would be a need for a particular purpose. A cause to be necessary. So God is saying this is necessary. Okay, if you, you want good, if you want to eat the good of the land, if you want to live, if you want to survive, this is that this is necessary. Okay, it's 
necessary that you do this. And then the definition of need requires something because it says that it is essential or very important. I told you, God says, if you want to live, look, listen, when, when Moses in the ninth chapter, when you read in the ninth chapter, when you see how God was so upset, well, let me not, not get ahead of myself. Let me just read the, the, the devotion today, okay? And then you'll see. But, you know, they had made God, those children of Israel had made God so upset. He was like, oh, if you know what's good for you, because if it had not been for Moses interceding, mm -mm, no, y'all wouldn't be here. So in this story, the Lord is just a little bit upset, okay? Because as I was stating, in the ninth chapter, Moses is up on the mountaintop seeking God's face for 40 days and 40 nights with direction. Now, I don't know if you've ever interceded for someone or you may be a pastor listening. I don't know if you went in, shut in for people in your ministry because you're, you know, you're asking God on their behalf. You're making petitions and supplications on their behalf. You know, you're in there before God seeking his face fasting, giving up your food, giving up your, you know, time with friends on their behalf. He's up on the mountaintop seeking God for direction. And he says, I did not eat or drink. So for 40 days, Moses didn't eat or drink. Now, you know, that's a hard thing. Most of us don't want to go a day or two without eating, certainly without drinking. But here he was 40 days seeking the face of God. He says, I didn't eat or drink. Then the Lord delivered to him two tablets of the covenant written on stone with the finger of God. <laughs> oh, Moses had a breakthrough. God began to give him what he wanted, the laws and the instructions that he wanted the children of Israel to do. And God wrote these tablets with his own fingers. He tells Moses now to get down off this mountain because God sees the hearts of the people at the bottom of the mountain. And how in just 40 days, how easily do we forget when God has delivered us, when he's brought us out of harm's way, he had brought the children out of Israel, I mean, out of Egypt, out of slavery. He had helped them cross the Red Sea from their enemies, you know, when Pharaoh was after them. He had done all these, you know, they had seen the, the, the miracles and signs of even their delivery when the 10 plagues came to Egypt. They seen how God spared them. And here in just 40 short days, Moses couldn't be, he couldn't, he couldn't have been gone 40 short days before they were back to doing what they do. So here, God is upset because he sees the heart of them after 40 short days that they had the priest Aaron. Aaron couldn't even stand up to them because he feared for his life, but he couldn't even stand up to, to them. And because he was a welder, you know, uh, or, or he was able to fashion, uh, uh, make a, a, a golden image out of, uh, you know, out of, out of gold, they had him to fashion a, a molten calf, it says, a molten image, a calf to worship. God was so upset, he caused the children of Israel a stiff-necked people, a stiff-necked people. And God tells Moses, he says, leave me alone. Leave me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their names from under heaven. This is how upset God was with, with, with the children of Israel. He told Moses when Moses tried to speak up on their behalf, he said, leave me alone. Uh-uh-uh. No, I'm through. Moses had to go in, go in again. He had to go in and, and, and shut in and, and, and petition God again on their behalf. So now he's interceding. On, on behalf of the Israelites. And so in the 10th chapter, which is our, you know, our scripture reading, in the 10th chapter, we see God asks the question, O Israel, what does the Lord thy God requires of thee? I believe in this season, guess what? God is asking some of you. What am I requiring of you? And if you don't know, you better find out. But for the children of Israel and for us even today, you know, he's requiring something. So he asks, what does the Lord God requires of thee? Because now, unlike before, it is a need and a necessity for your good. He said, it's for your good. It is a need and a necessity for your good that you do 
all of these things that I've told you here. You walk with me. You love me above all. You keep my commandments. It is for your good. Yes, it will be in your best interest that you fear God and reverence him. It will be in your best interest that you walk toward him and not away from him in all of his ways, not some. You know, we want to serve God when it's convenient. We want to walk with him when it's easy. But the minute the, the road get a little hard or get a little tough, then we want to kick him to the curb. But he says, oh no, you're going to have to walk with me in all of my ways. All of my ways. Love and serve him. The definition of to serve, get this, it means to be useful. How are you being useful to God? How are you being useful? That's what to serve. When you serve somebody, you're, you're, you're asking them, how can I help you? How can I be useful to you? How can I make your life better? In what ways are you helping God with promoting his kingdom? What ways? I'm asking you. It's, it, it's, it's all about his dynasty, <laughs> not yours. Who have you led to Christ? lately? Who have you prayed for even ministered to? Is, is it all about you asking for prayer or is it all about you, you know, uh, wanting your needs met? How have you been useful to God? He said, his kingdom come. His kingdom come. His will be done in earth as it is in heaven. As I close this devotion, I want to let you know God's mind has not changed, okay? What he required back then is what he's requiring also today, that you love him with all your heart, that you walk his way, amen, that you serve him with a pure heart. His requirements has not changed your heart. So as we, amen, finish up this devotion, I want you to answer yourself those questions. How are you being useful to the kingdom of God in this day? In 2023, how are you being useful to God? Because that's serving him. If you can't look back over your life and see how you have served him, I'm not talking about living holy and righteous. That's your least. That, that, is, that is God says, be ye holy for I am holy. That is your least thing that you should be doing. How else are you being useful to the kingdom of God? So let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for today. And even how you have shown your mercy toward the children of Israel. We thank you today for your goodness and mercy toward us. I know, Father, many times we're all, all, all so rebellious and, and we're also like a stiff necked generation because we want to do what we want to do. We, we, we want to satisfy the flesh. We're always thinking of me, myself, and I. We're in the flesh. But Father, today, on this day, as those that are listening at this daily devotion, if they find themselves in that predicament or in that space or that place. Father, I repent. We repent. I pray that they will repent wholeheartedly. Help us in our actions and our words to match up. Sometimes, you know, what we say and what we do are two totally different things, but this day, Father God, help our actions and our words to match up. Help our obedience and love to match up. Sometimes we say we love you, but your word says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Help us to obey your will, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, I hope this devotion came out okay. I know in, in writing on the highway, we're going through some, you know, not getting the best lighting and going through some shaded areas and some light areas. And so I just pray that you're able to hear though. That's the most important thing, that you're able to hear Shema, what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you today. Not Lady O, but what the Spirit of God is speaking in your heart through this devotion today and until tomorrow as i always say smooches <laughs>